on coronavirus hope for today, shifting your perspective. Henry and Alex Seeley, pastors of the Belonging Company, share how they've been encouraging their ministry in this season and the revelation they've received while spending time in the secret place. Plus, Danny Goki talks about why now more than ever we need to love God and love people. It's an exclusive interview with the former American Idol contestant and Christian artist you don't want to miss. Join us for 30 minutes of nonstop hope and inspiration. We are so glad that you invited us into your home today. And you know, it's been a joy and an honor for us to bring you coverage from a Christian perspective during this pandemic. And you know, as we're all gearing up for the days ahead, as we emerge from the quarantines and stay at home orders, one thing that will never change is that we are always here for you 24 seven. You know, if you need someone to lean on or connect with, our prayer line is always open at 888-665-4483. And I just wanna just share some prayer requests. So many of you have been calling in with your concerns and just prayer requests for your family. We have Noreen. This is one that I know a lot of people are going through. She said she's waking up terrified to go outside and she's watching too much TV. And Noreen, I just encourage you, put your eyes and your trust on Jesus and you can turn off the TV and tune into us because we will always give you the good news and good hope. Then also we have Kelly here. She just says she's dealing with a lot of anxiety. That has been a big thing so many people are struggling with. And you know, I just wanna encourage you with a, you know, that God always puts on my heart. If I'm feeling anxious, I just say, God, here's my anxious thought. Here's my anxiety. I release it to him. And one thing that's also important to do, you know, when you're feeling anxious or you're feeling discouraged or whatever is happening in your world is to stand on the word of God. And we love to give you a scripture to encourage you. And here it is today. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for he who promised is faithful. And that comes from Hebrews 10, 23. You know, I love that so much that we need to hold on to him, that he is faithful. He will never leave us nor forsake us. And we always need to hold on to that fact. Well, we want to share this touching testimony and demonstration of God's healing power. You know, this story comes out of Georgia. Listen to this. COVID-19 left a pastor's wife unconscious for weeks, but he prayed until she woke up. Pastor Leonard Hines rushed his wife Claudette to a hospital near Decatur back in March. Hines says he told her he loved her, that they were going to trust in the Lord and Savior to heal her. Claudette was hospitalized for three weeks with a breathing machine. Now, through a baby monitor in his wife's room, Hines would read and pray for her. When Claudette woke up, Heinz says he knows God is real and he answers prayers. Amen to that. I love there's so many testimonies and stories of how God has been moving in the midst of this pandemic. So be encouraged by those testimony today. Well, don't go away because in a few moments, Christian singer Danny Goki opens up about his new music for the season. And when we come back in 60 seconds, Henry and Alex Seeley from The Belonging Company share an encouraging word just for you. We'll be right back. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a savior, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. When Henry and Alex Seeley moved from Australia to Nashville back in 2012, after spending two decades in full-time ministry, they never dreamed God would call them to lead a congregation. Now they're the lead pastors of The Belonging Company, which centers on community and encountering Jesus. Henry and Alex join us today. Thank you so much for joining us. It's great to be with you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, so you know, the world is walking through a global pandemic and The Belonging Company has a global impact. So I just want to ask you both, how has your ministry responded to the crisis and encouraged believers to keep their faith? I mean, we're doing everything that we can just to stay connected with our people. Obviously, uh, you know, we're living in interesting times right now and, uh, you know, a, a crazy situation the world over right now. I think every church obviously is walking through the same situation, but, you know, we're really doing our best just to stay connected with people online. Uh, but to, you know, 
keep, try and keep things personal as well, rather than it just being a uh, feeling like it's just through a screen. We're really trying to be as personal as we can, uh, you know, one on one with people through uh, connecting with them, you know, through text messages or th calling people on the phone. And even with our services, just trying to keep things as normal as we can so that there's, you know, as much normality for people as, as we can in, in this season. And Alex, what about you? You know, you're a mother and just how have you been encouraging women, especially during these times? Yeah, well, I a few weeks ago, I uh, just did a daily devotional where on Instagram Live, we would just gather women and men ended up joining in as well. But um, we've just really been staying connected through our life groups, our connect groups, um, and just that personal connection through any social media platform so that we've been able to pray together, uh, do weekly prayer meetings, uh, daily devotions, uh, connect groups within their small communities where Zoom calls have been fantastic. And so really we've just had to turn everything that we do normally day to day into a virtual yeah. uh, reality, but it's still had that same impact. Everyone is actually more connected. Yeah. The irony of this social distancing has actually brought us closer together. Mm -hmm. Yes, I wholeheartedly agree that even though we've been socially distant, you know, the power of social media and the internet has been bringing us, you know, together. And, you know, as we move forward from the crisis, because a lot of states are looking to start opening up and with businesses, how should we look to be empowered by the Holy Spirit during this season and time? I mean, I think, you know, anytime that uh, we find ourselves in a situation like this, I, I think there's incredible opportunity, especially as believers, uh, not to walk in fear, but to walk in faith. And, uh, you know, I know that a lot of people, it has been a, a fearful time, obviously people losing work, losing income. Uh, but, you know, I honestly believe it's such an incredible opportunity for us to, again, uh, put our dependence on God and allow him to, you know, do the miracles in our lives. And I think so often we become self-dependent uh, rather than God-dependent, even though we, you know, profess faith, even though we talk about God, even though we might, you know, have plenty of Christian things in our, in our lives and in our homes. But it's moments like this when our faith really is tested. And, uh, we, you know, we've just been encouraging our church to to dig into that place, uh, especially while there's all this extra time for a lot of people, at least. Uh, there's there's a lot of extra time. And uh, just to, to kind of steal away with God and not squander this season, you know, just binging on Netflix shows and all that sort of stuff, even though there's, you know, TV's okay. But what if you could spend that extra time that you have really just getting in the Word, getting in the presence of God, you know, surrounding your life with worship? And, you know, I think even as we move forward as, as a church, not just as a church organization, but as believers, we have an incredible opportunity uh, to really dig in and ask God, what's next? You know, how do, how do we redefine? I, I don't think it's about us getting back to normal. I, I think actually this has been an incredible opportunity to reset and uh, find out what's a priority in our lives, what's important, and how we can uh, walk with the Holy Spirit moving forward, you know, just seeing what He has for us. Do we have to get back to all the exact same routines that we had before and busy ourselves up? Or is this something new for us? Is, is this, you know, really a season to innovate? Is it a time, especially for the church, I believe it's a, a, a time for us to innovate and, and uh, not just see things through the old lens, but to look forward to how we can engage with people uh, in a new way. And I think it's the same for every believer. There's an, there's a, an amazing opportunity uh, to, to dig into that place, I think. Yeah, and I think it's a great window too. Mm. I heard someone say recently that we have a short window where people who are non-believers are hungry and um, really open to hear God's voice because there's fear and there's a, there's a certain unknown. And I think as the church, let's not look inward, but actually let's make sure we're looking outward and answering those questions and being available to our neighbours and our community. And I really think the church could rise up and be the greatest evangelistic uh, season of our time is right now. Mm -hmm. You know, Henry and Alex, you both touch on really powerful points. And Henry, you're talking about it's a reset. You know, it's a time for us to really focus our attention on God. And Alex, as you're speaking about how we need to be more loving towards our neighbors, I just want to ask both of you, as you've had more time than ever to really sit and hear God, what has he been speaking to you both? Honestly, it's been ironic during this season because I feel like I've had less time. <laughs> We've been, 
you know, in a pretty busy state yeah. these last few weeks, just, you know, reorganizing the way that we're doing church. But even in that, you know, there has been some amazing opportunities just to uh, just to get away with with God. And, uh, you know, I, I think for me, just stirring my heart again about faith, really not just talking about faith, not just uh, having the, you know, the label of faith, but actually walking in faith. What does it lo- what does it really look like as a believer to walk in faith? Because uh, I think so often we can talk about having faith, uh, but what God's wanting to see in our lives and what God is wanting to release in our lives is an actual walk of faith. And, uh, you know, I, I think when, when you're in situations like this, and it can be, uh, you know, highly charged with your emotions and, and you know, all the, all the emotions are, are, are alive and well right now. You know, there's, there's a lot of uh, fear for a lot of people. There's a lot of stress. There's a lot of worry. There's a lot of anxiety. And yet faith our walk with God draws us and invites us into this space where we can actually come and lay all those things down and so that they don't become the controlling dominant, you know, thoughts and focus of our lives, but our faith in God actually gives us a, a you know, a stable and firm foundation to walk upon. And so, you know, again, even for us as a church, the future is going to look different and uh, it's easy as a, as a pastor and as a leader to, to get drawn into some of those places of wondering and worrying about what the future is going to look like. And God just keeps reminding me again, this is my church. You know, the gates of hell cannot prevail against the church and not just the organization, but the body of believers. And so I want to encourage everybody that's watching today, if you are, you know, feeling these feelings and these emotions of fear and anxiety, that they're very real, absolutely. And they're a response to maybe what you're walking through right now. And yet as a son or a daughter of God, there's a foundation of faith uh, that can be established in your life during this season that I believe is going to make way for future miracles and the, the, the miraculous things of God. And what about you, Alex? What is God speaking to you? Yeah, for me personally, it's been a going deeper in the secret place. I think it's a very, very unique time that we are given so much space to be with the Lord. And we can either choose to be distracted or we can be drawn into the invitation of going into a deeper place because I do believe that God is jealous for us, our relationship. I think a lot of Christians like to work for God, but he's wanting to teach us how to walk with him in an intimate way. And for me personally, uh, it's a reset of, okay, Alex, I want you to go deeper and I want you to hear my voice and I want you to obey it. I don't want you to just fill up your life with lots of busy Christian schedule, but actually listen and obey. And I think it's a really important time for us as individuals to seek the face of God where he may be found for ourselves so that we can encourage ourselves in the Lord and we can hear his ways. And we and, and in that space, we don't have to fear the future, but we can be settled in the knowing of him. When he's in control, everything is good. And so for me, it's just been a deepening of uh, getting away with him again in a beautiful way. Yeah, I wholeheartedly agree. I feel the same thing of just getting away with our Heavenly Father. There's nothing like, well, Heather and Henry and Alex, thank you so much for joining us today. So, Thanks for having us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. In times of uncertainty, we need to focus on what is clear. And as believers, we can be absolutely certain that God has a perfect and unique purpose and plan for you and for me. In times like these, His presence is everything. There's nothing like having that encounter, spending that alone, intimate time with Jesus when you feel the Holy Spirit moving on your heart. God is faithful. He promises to never leave us or forsake us. He also promises to destroy our enemies and to save His people. The unchangeable character of God is what will get us through every difficult time. When we're going through a time of uncertainty, like we've just been through, like we're going through right now, there is a God who is unchangeable. And we know that our God is faithful. In Psalm 27, it says, I would have lost heart if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and He shall strengthen your heart. In these perilous times, we as believers must not forget the glorious privilege we have to go into the secret place to obtain protection, power, and provision to not just survive, but to thrive. Your Father in heaven who loves you so passionately, He's going to provide for you. He's going to protect you. He's going to take care of you. You can trust in the faithfulness and the character of God. 
Danny Gokey is a chart-topping Christian artist who spreads hope around the world. His new single, Love God, Love People, is the perfect anthem and reminder for us all as we emerge from COVID-19 and face the days ahead. Danny, thank you so much for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me. Well, we first want to say happy belated birthday to you and just want to know how did you celebrate during the quarantine? <laughs> um, I did a lot of Zoom calls, honestly. And um, it was, I, had, I actually went and, and wrote a song that day and spent some time with my family and did some Zoom calls. So it was kind of nice. Oh, that sounds like a great birthday that you're able to have. And you know, your new single, Love God, Love People is out and it's a release that is such perfect timing. What inspired you to create the song? You know, that's always been a mantra, but it's, you know, it's from quite honestly, you know, the meaning of life. You know, there's a scripture that says, love God with all your heart, soul, mind and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. And, and then it goes on to say, you know what, you know, the law and the prophets are summed up in this. And, you know, when I think about that, like the, whole, the reason why the whole Bible was written was so that we could learn how to love God and love people and love ourselves. And so I wanted to write a song that just embodied that phrase because, you know, it's every person doing their part. We all have a part in this and fixing our world. And that simply that part is just loving God loving people, loving ourselves properly. And so I like it. The, 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 the chorus says, keep it real simple, bring everything back to ground zero. It all comes down to this, love God and love people. We live in a world that's breaking, but if we find a way to change it, it just comes down to that. That is really, really good. And you know, Danny, like in these times of head, why is it so important, you know, for us to hold on to that, that truth and what God tells us is to love God and to love people? Because this is actually, I believe when we get to heaven, God's going to ask us, did, did you learn how to love? Love is something that doesn't come natural to our, I guess, to our, our natural instincts. You know, we, we really do, um, we're out to protect ourselves. Uh, but the best way you can protect yourself and protect this world is by loving others and passing that along. Because it's, love is like a seed. And if we sow it into other people's lives and we keep sowing it, it'll bear fruit. And we realize that with love, people flourish. You know, my kids in this house, they flourish when I love them. And part of that is disciplining them. Part of that is teaching them. Part of that is sacrificing my own comfort to give them a better life. And if we just did that for other people, could you imagine the change that we'd see in our world? What is love? Love is putting someone else before yourself. Love is putting their best interests at heart. So when you truly love someone, you don't look at how you can make more money off of them. You don't look at how you can uh, get something from them. It always typically comes comes back to giving something to them, by by by, I guess giving a part of your heart to them and investing in them. Um, and that's, man, honestly, that's just the crux of it. It's it's giving. If we all gave to each other, none of us would lack anything. That is so good. It's so important just to give and out of our abundance of our heart without like selfishness, just to love on people. And I just want to ask you, Dan, you know, during these times of quarantines, what has God really shown you about love? How have you been able to show love in your home and your family and to your fans? Well, one of the greatest ways that God has been teaching me recently is out of James 3 is with our words. Our words can start fires. You know, the, the Bible talks about that. You, you know, one moment we're blessing, worshiping God with our mouths. Then the next time we're talking bad about you know, our neighbor. And he said, it can't be so. Words start fires or words can put out fires. Um, words can bring rejection in someone's lives or words can actually um, bring acceptance in someone's lives. Words can bring healing and words can bring can cut wounds. The Bible talks about in Proverbs that our tongues can cut wounds. So one of the ways that I'm focusing on, and I told this to my wife, I said, you know, even, you know, we try to be, sometimes we can be funny and be sarcastic. And I said, we got to cut that out. You know, words, because honestly, words are like seeds that can begin to, if your heart, you know, agrees with like maybe the sarcastic remark, it can actually accept that seed of that word and begin to bear negative fruit. So the way, you know, what does it talk about? The Bible says that with our tongues, we can control our, even our nature. What if we just started speaking right about ourselves instead of saying, oh, I eat too much and oh, I just never can get exercise. What if we start saying, I'm a person who's disciplined. I'm a person who controls my, my nature. The Bible talks about that. We can control our very nature by our tongue. 
So one of the ways that I'm doing by loving God, loving people is using my words, not only to glorify God, but to lift up people. That is so good. I love that revelation that God has just put on your heart about words. And, you know, I'm married as well. And so it's a time, you know, as married couples, just thinking about the words that we speak. And even as you said, you know, not being sarcastic, just cutting it out because, you know, our marriages are such an important relationship in our lives. And, you know, one thing, Danny, it's as obvious, you're not wasting your time in confinement. You're really no. seeking on God. And what has he been revealing to you? What has he been speaking to you? So the one thing that I can tell you that I've been, I started leaning in during this because was this uh pandemic inconvenient yes i lost uh, probably about 60 75 shows over two-thirds of my income in one moment and I, I i gotta be honest i was a bit irritated like you know what i i have things that i was gonna do with that money we, we, you know we live in a house that we wanted to finish up and finish our driveway and things like that but then as i started leaning in i said god you're doing something Hebrews 12 talks about a shaking, that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And it even said that there is another shaking coming. And um, as I started leaning in, I started realizing, whoa, there were some things in my life that needed to be shaken free. I was busy, but I wasn't fruitful. I mean, there was fruit in my life, don't get me wrong. But could I have been more fruitful? Absolutely, because that's what Jesus said. He said, I'm the vine. And I cut off the branches that don't bear fruit in this time. So that my prayer changed this. My prayer changed. Lord, shake me. I want to be shaken because I want to be more fruitful. And so as I've been leaning in, here's what I, 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 I this is a very loving statement I'm going to make. But I, I think as a church, we need to be careful returning back to what was when everything's normal because God shook for a reason. And if we weren't paying attention, we will go back to being busy. We will go back to being unfruitful. We will go back to keeping up with the Joneses. And God does not want that. God wants us to become fruitful, to sit at his table. And at his table, we learn more about him. We learn how to love and then to love others. And so, I mean, I can say a whole lot more about that. But this is really what God's put on my heart. That is so real and so true because that's something I think so many of us, you know, having this additional time to be at home, like God is shaking all the things like the idols that are in our lives that we have to get rid of it. And I love what you said is like, we can't just go back to normal. <laughs> like what does normal yeah. even look like? And, you know, Danny, what would you say to that person right now that maybe is kind of like, well, I really want to get back to normal. But, you know, what we're all, a lot of us are hearing God saying is like, it's not going to be back to normal. It's time for us to seek his face like never before. What would you say to that person that's fearful of the days ahead? Well, and I think if, if we're fearful, it's because we've allowed the enemy to speak in our ear as opposed to God to speak in our ear. You know, fear has a source, and it's always rooted in, in the enemy of our souls. And it's because God has not given us a spirit of fear. And here's what I'd say. The moment you open up and entertain ideas of the enemy uh, or what, you know, I guess one of the things I've learned is you have to let go of what you thought was the best plan for your life to allow the best plan for my life. And, and I was there. I cannot tell this person. The one prayer I started praying was God shake me. And I did not want to pray that in the beginning. I was like, oh, this is so inconvenient. But the fruit that's coming in front of the fruit in my marriage, the fruit in my children. Um, let me tell you this. The kingdom of heaven has blessings untold. And when you step into God's view of things and you put trust in what he's doing as opposed to trust in your own resources, trust in your own flesh, you're going to see the kingdom of God and you're going to see great blessings and you're going to see life abundant like you've never seen before. But you have to let go of what you thought life should be. And I'm noticing a lot of people struggling with letting go of what they like because we're, we know so little. And so when we, our little minds come up with, oh, I think this is fun and this is great, we grab onto it with all our might. But it's in the letting go and opening our hands that we can receive actually God's greater plan, God's greater purpose, and God's greater blessings in our lives. Mm, that is so good that he's shaking everything. I'm just going to put you a little in the spot, Dana. I just really feel in my spirit. Can you just sing a little something quickly over someone who's watching right now so they can hold on to hope and trust in God in this season? Absolutely. There's hope in front of me. There's a light, I still see it. There's a hand still holding you, even when you don't believe it. Cause I might be down, but I'm not dead. There's better days still up ahead, even after all we've seen. There's hope in front of us, yeah. Thank you so much, Danny, from singing from your heart and just sharing the revelation that God has given you in this season. And we just pray continued blessings over you and your family during this time. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you.
For more than eight weeks, we have been coming to you daily, bringing you nonstop hope and inspiration. It has been an honor and a joy for you to join us every day as we've just shown you how God has been moving in the midst of this pandemic. And we just want to let you know that this is the last week of our program, so Friday will be our last day. But we just hope during this time that as you've been receiving, as you've been poured into, as you've been encouraged, as that fear has been broken off of you, that chain of fear and anxiety has been broken off of you, you've been hearing from people that have overcome COVID-19, that you have been inspired. We pray that as you've been watching this program, that something's been stirred up in you, that you would go out and be bold. And I just want to share this scripture with you. And it comes from 2 Corinthians 3, verse 12. And it says, therefore, since we have such hope, we use great boldness of speech. And I just want to declare that over you today, that so many people in the world right now, they may not know the hope of Jesus Christ. They don't know about the salvation. They don't know about the goodness that he did on the cross, but we do. And we can hold on to that. We can stand on that. It is unshakable. It is never changing. You know, it's with us in the midst of these trials and tribulations that we can find peace and hope and joy. But the one thing that would be so selfish for us, if we've heard all these things about how God is moving and how he's, you know, pulled people out of the muck and miry clay in the midst of COVID-19, if we don't pass it on, if we don't pass on his love, if we don't pass on his joy. So I just want to encourage you today to wherever you are, if you're in the grocery store, just reach out to somebody. I just want to share something quickly that actually happened to me yesterday. I was in the grocery store looking for some cat food and I noticed one of the grocery store workers, he was like on the ground, he was doing inventory and he said he was starting to have chest pains. And as I looked over and then the other um, grocery store worker came over to him and I just something in my spirit, I was like, can I just pray for you? And he was so open and right there in the grocery store aisle, we just prayed and I just spoke healing in the name of Jesus. And that same boldness that, you know, I was able to get, it's not easy, I understand it can be a little nerve wracking at times. You don't know how people are gonna respond, but can I just encourage you that people are truly hungry. People really, really right now more than any time before need to know about the hope of Jesus Christ. And the only way that they're going to know is if we share the good news of the gospel, if we share a word of hope, if we pray for them, if we're there for him. And it's amazing the smile that we'll see on people's faces. So I just want to encourage you today to be bold, no matter what you're going through, that God wants to use you in a powerful and remarkable way like never before. You know, just like we heard Danny Goki say and so many others, we don't know what the new normal is going to be, but that's okay because you know what? We have Jesus and that's all that we need. Well, we're so glad that you joined us for 30 minutes of nonstop hope and inspiration. Stand on the hope of God and we will see you tomorrow. Have a good one. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.